Hi, Shalom friends. I'm assuming you've heard of this expression, an apple does not fall far from its tree or the tree. And of course, uh, what we mean by that is, if, if you see, for example, a child that's talented and you want to compliment uh, the parent or the child, you say, oh, you know, I see, well, you, you're not far from, from your parents. Sometimes it works with beauty, sometimes it works with talent, sometimes it works, sometimes it works with intelligence, and so on. And by and large, uh, it seems to be true. And yet, uh, we would think, in terms of spiritual greatness, it should, be an, it's, it, it should be more consistent than the way we see it today. So, unfortunately, we sometimes find uh, parents that are observant, or perhaps we'll use the word religious, and we don't find the children necessarily uh, following in that path. And we wonder, what happened to the apple? Why is it so far from the tree? So wise people have commented, and they said it's true that an apple will ordinarily fall close to the tree. But what happens if there's hurricane winds? Then the apple might be uh, thrown off course, and you might find an apple very, very far from the tree. He said, we are living in turbulent times in terms of spirituality. It's not anymore a, uh, a quiet world or a protected environment. And as a result, our children are buffeted by different winds, different ideologies, different passions, and not all of them seem to be strong enough to, to overcome it. So yes, as a general rule, parents have a certain way of life. We could assume that the children will follow more or less in that same path, but when it's windy, all bets are off. Well, when... If you think about it for a minute, would that also be true about the Jewish people? Ordinarily, we would say that the Jewish people uh, should be close to where their ancestors used to be, but we find actually the Jewish people very far. We've, we've rolled very far. We're actually dispersed throughout all of the world, so physically and perhaps emotionally as well. We're quite distant than the forefathers certainly from biblical times, when it's a different milieu, a different, a different everything. How far are we from that tree? Certainly we've gone through many, many uh, vicissitudes, and there have been many, many tsunamis and hurricanes and volcanoes and so on. So here, let me use a different, um, a different idea. And that is the idea of a tree that is rooted. You see, when we talk about an apple, the apple is severed from the branch. So whether it's found underneath the apple tree or five feet away from the apple tree or miles away from the apple tree, um, it's all relative because we're assuming that this apple that was once on the tree has been severed from its tree. And now the qu only question would be, how far? But if we think about the Jewish people, both individually, but I'm thinking more right now, collectively, the Jewish people are not apples that are severed from anything. We're actually the tree itself, and the tree itself hasn't moved. Why? Because we have roots that go deep, deep into the ground. If you could uh, substitute the word year for a yard, we have over 3,300 years or 3,300 yards deep within, embedded deeply into the earth, which basis, basically makes us invincible. Nothing can move us. There's actually a, quite an interesting Jewish law that strengthens this concept. And to adopt a thought from the Rebbe, we know uh, one of the well-known laws of kosher is though we're not supposed to cook meat uh, and milk together, there is a sense of proportion. If just a drop of milk falls into a pot of meat, if their proportion would be 1 to 60, and I'm speaking very general, we would then say that that one drop of milk is nullified, it is as if it is non-existent, and the, the food remains kosher. 
though a drop of milk did fall into it, because the proportion might be 100 to 1 or 200 to 1 and so on, that drop is, is non-existent, speaking halachically. Well, there are also laws that, of kosher, which are not as well known, but that have to do with agriculture. And one of the famous laws is that when you plant a tree and it begin, gives forth fruit, for the first three years, you may not use that, those fruits. It's only on the fourth year onwards that we could start using the fruit. The first three years is called orla. It is to be removed from uh, your usage. So if, let's say, you planted a lemon tree, and uh, when you planted the lemon tree on year number two, you got some lemons, you could not use that in Jewish law until the fourth year of, of its produce. What happens now if you have an orchard, and the, it's an orchard of 250 trees, and you know which tree has gone through its cycle, so some trees are in year number one of the fruits, other trees and the majority are maybe the sixth or seventh year. And for some reason or other, you lost track. And in this large orchard of, for example, apple trees or lemon trees, there's one tree which you know for sure is within the three years, but you can't distinguish between one and the other. You really don't know. Jewish law basically says you can't use any of the trees until the required three years pass. So now that you've learned a little bit of Jewish law, you might question why. It's more than one in 60. In fact, it's more than one in 200, which is the law about our law. Why can't you use the tree? The answer is because the tree is rooted. It didn't get mixed in. It's there. It was planted, it took root, it produces. It's not mixed. You're, you're the one who cannot distinguish the tree from another. You're the one that's confused. The tree is not confused. In contrast to taking a, a drop of milk, for example, from, from um, a quart of milk, you're removing it from the quart. You're now putting it into an alien environment called meat. In this case, it got diffused, it got mixed in, and therefore it became overwhelmed by the majority. 60 to 1 makes it as if it's not there, certainly 100 to 1 or 200 to 1. But a tree, the tree hasn't gotten mixed in. There are maybe 300 trees or 250 trees, but each one of them has an identity of its own. So in this case, if you can't distinguish one from another, you have to be strict. The point that I would like to convey to you is the Jewish people are not apples scattered in the wind. We are trees that are rooted in the ground, but in this case, when I say in the ground, deep into antiquity, into biblical origins, or most importantly, the, our roots start from Sinai and actually go even deeper than that to the root of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. So if you ever feel like a wind, and you feel like you're being buffeted, and you're wondering if the wind will blow strong enough, will you ever be severed from the branch? Stop thinking in those terms. Remember, each and every one of us is a tree which is rooted deep, strong, and embedded. Nothing will ever move us away. And that is why, happily, I'm hap I would like to report to you, even those apples in italics that have drifted so far away, often somewhere along their journey of rolling, they actually come to a stop. And then they realize the tree from where they came from. And either they or perhaps a generation later, they return uh, to the tradition. But we, we're strongly rooted. So friends, be a tree. Give forth healthy fruit and know that the Almighty God looks upon his people as a farmer or, or as a gardener might appreciate the most beautiful of orchards. Shalom. Shalom.